Hello and welcome to a special episode of Revealing God. Uh, today I have a treat for you. Um, today we are going to be watching a video with Clay Clark and Donna Clement Petruska. That is Kim Clement's daughter and uh, I like keeping up with her because she does a very good job of kind of breaking down his um, prophecies and relating them to the times that we're in. And so it's a little bit longer video. Um, this one's going to be a longer video, um, but that's why we're calling it a special and it's not going to be one of our numbered episodes. It's just going to be a special, but Clay Clark is going to be talking about the 25 things that you need to know that's happening right now. And a lot of them tie in with biblical prophecy of the end times. And it's showing us that, hey guys, we are in the end times. So if you don't know Jesus, now is the time to get to know him. Um, anyways, enjoy the show and I will see you afterwards. Welcome everybody to Current Events. As you can see, my mother is not here today, but I have a very special guest joining us for Current Events today, and that is Clay Clark. And many of you know him from the Reawaken America tour and Thrive Time Business, and many of you follow him on Rumble already. Um, but if you don't know who he is, you're going to get a wonderful experience and introduction to him today. So welcome Clay Clark to current events. We're so happy to have you here today. And we are very excited to hear what is going on. We need an update. Yeah, well, a couple things. Uh, one, we're headed into Kim Clement country there, uh, Detroit, Michigan, June 7th and 8th. And obviously your, your father's uh, prophetic uh, voice, uh, the prophetic uh, uh, messages from Amanda Grace as well are a big part uh, of the Reawaken tour. And so uh, you've probably been to Detroit more than I have, but we're taking the Reawaken America tour to Detroit, Michigan on June 7th and 8th. So for anybody out there who wants to meet uh, Eric Trump, uh, General Flynn, uh, Mike Lindell, uh, Cash Patel, uh, Devin Nunez, uh, Roseanne, uh, Jim Brewer, uh, yourself, uh, Amanda Grace. I mean, there's 70 plus speakers over a two day period of time. If you just go to time to free America.com, that's time to free America.com. You can go up there and request a ticket. And at our events, Donna, you know this, and a lot of your listeners do too, but you can name your price. Uh, there are 70 speakers over two days, and we just now moved under 950 tickets remaining. So it's going to be a great time. And then Thursday night, it's a Friday, Saturday event. Thursday night, we're all going to go bowling at what we're calling the Detroit, Michigan Mega Bowl. And so we're all going to be going bowling together, General Flynn and Team America. So if you want to go bowling and meet America's general, that'll be on 630 the night before the two-day Reawaken America Tour event begins. So that would be my housekeeping note for everybody out there. If you have not yet attended, this is the final confirmed event. It's in Detroit, Michigan. I had no idea how connected the Kim Clement ministry was to the to, to uh, the Detroit, Michigan area. Uh, but Don, I understand that uh, Kim Clement, your, your father, was in Detroit quite a bit with the ministry. Absolutely, yes. And it was from Dearborn, Michigan in 1996 that he prophesied 9-11. So, um, you know, and not even just that. Also, um, if anybody's heard the song, his, one of his most famous songs he wrote is Somewhere in the Future and You Look Much Better Than You Look Right Now. And the Somewhere in the Future song was written uh, just over the border in Canada, but it was when he was working all those years in Detroit. And um, so I think it's it's so prophetic that that the final Reawaken America tour event will be in in Detroit, Michigan, because of the years and years my dad labored there. And I understand you didn't actually realize that when booking it. I mean, this is just God doing this, if I'm correct. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, I think God is using the Trump family in a big way. And, and Eric Trump specifically, he and General Flynn tell me where they want to go. You know, so I have a 100% of 0% input on where we're going. So my role is once they tell me the state and city they want to go to, my job is to find a venue and to fill it up. And so that would be housekeeping note number one there for you, Donna. Now, as far as the news of the day, uh, I've got 25 uh, news updates that I believe are very important. Uh, do you want to make it our goal to get through 20 of them or 25? Or how many of these are you wanting to get through today? 25. 
All right. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go through the 25 and we'll see if we can keep up here. Now to my right, I'm not uh, playing uh, Tetris or something. I just, to my right, I have my notes here. So I'll pull this up here. Uh, and I always want to be respectful of your time, but pack in a lot of facts per capita. So first update is starting um, this month, this Monday, uh, or so the Monday, uh, it'd be March 11th to be precise. March 11th, America stopped uh, its, its banking, its emergency uh, banking uh, bailout program called the Bank Term Funding Program. It's BTFP. Everyone should look it up. BTFP. That program stopped on March 11th. And someone says, well, why does that matter? Well, Donna, if you remember when the banks were collapsing, uh, this time last year, many people were very, very concerned about the uh, collapsing of the banking system as many of the smaller banks were folding, regional banks were, were failing. Well, the Fed created this program, if we believe that narrative, called the Bank Term Funding Program, which infused banks with needed capital so that they would not fail despite the fact that they're upside down on many of their loans related to commercial buildings. You know, many commercial buildings in Detroit, uh, many commercial buildings in downtowns um, in San Francisco, uh, and you know, major cities, I mean, Washington, D.C., et cetera, New York, they're vacant. And so banks are now upside down in those commercial buildings and the commercial building owners can't pay, they, they can't make their mortgage payments. They can't make their payments. And so you're seeing a collapse of the uh, banking system. Many of the small and regional banks are invested heavily in commercial real estate. And so with the bank term funding programming uh, program ending on uh, March 11th, many people believe that that will lead to uh, banks uh, stopping lending and to the collapse of many regional and local banks. My goodness gracious. So something I want to bring up quickly bef yeah. before you keep going, let me say one thing um, because I don't want to forget. The something I've been telling and explaining to people is that part of what we're doing in this movement, you could call it, is that in order to be able to do the things that we do, uh, for instance, right run our network or you doing the Reawaken America tours and all the thing you do, you know, we're not backed by these big names, these big money media people, you know, right. and we, um, I, I've heard it referred and I've been referring it to myself as well as a parallel economy that we right. are sort of running on together. And uh, one way in which people can support or, or be involved. A lot of people, I found a lot of people feel um, that they don't know, they want to do something, but they don't know what to do. And I've been encouraging yeah. people to support people like you, people like our ministry and others, uh, in what is this now parallel economy. And, right. um, uh, I don't know if maybe you can articulate it a little better than I just did because I've been trying to find well, the words. Well, let me say this real quick too, um, is um, the, the item number two, which ties into your question, it's called the Dodd-Frank Act. It's not new, but most people remember the Dodd-Frank Act as being this act that uh, ushered in um, bailouts. That's how people remember in their mind, but it was actually what authorized bail-ins. So the way it works now is, I encourage everyone look it up, just type in bail-ins Dodd-Frank Act. The way it works now is that when you and I deposit money in the bank, we're not viewed as a depositor where we're keeping our money to be safe. We're now viewed as an investor in the bank. That's how the language was changed. So now banks can do a bail-in. So if a bank has a financial crisis, they can now take all of the money out of your bank account and use it to uh, pay off their financial mismanagement. So you and I are now putting our money at risk by investing in the bank. If that makes sense. By, by depositing money in the bank, it would almost be like you're betting on that bank's investments. So um, this is a very big thing. I just interviewed Andy Schechtman today, uh, Andrew Sorcini, uh, Peter Navarro, Trump's chief uh, financial advisor. We just did a show today. Well, remember, when Trump was in the White House, okay, many people love the Trump economy. The man who was his chief and top financial mind, the, the, the top economist, was Peter Navarro. I mean, Peter Navarro did three great things for America. He fought against deregulation. He, he fought for deregulation. He fought against regulations. He fought for deregulation. He pushed for lower taxation. And he also pushed for tough negotiation with China. And maybe your listeners can all pull it up as I mention it. But if you go to givesendgo.com forward slash Navarro, I make a 0% commission to pitch this idea. Peter Navarro, a great friend of mine, he's 74 years old and he goes to prison next week. 
And you say, why is he going to prison? He refused to convey or to give over his cell phone, his text messages, or his emails related to his private conversations with Trump while he was serving as the chief negotiator with China. Well, obviously, you're not going to want to give up that information. So Peter Navarro, he's 74 years old. He calls me on December 23rd. I'll remember like it was yesterday. He called me the eve of Christmas Eve, and he says, Clay, how are you? I said, how are you, Peter? Can I, can I help you? That's why I said, can I help you? And you and I have that kind of relationship, too. When we talk, you know, it's hard to reach each other sometimes. But, you know, it's like, how are you? And we actually care, you know. You and, you and Amanda Grace have that relationship. You and Lance Wall now. You, there's, you're, we actually care. You know, we care. So it's not, a, it's not like I'm, I'm not booking a guy on my show. It's not a transactional thing. It's my friend, Peter Navarro. And I said, how, how can I help you, Peter? And he said, I have to raise a million dollars in the next 60 days because I'm going to go to prison. And the only way I can get out of this thing is I've got to fight this all the way to the Supreme Court. And so, Donna, if your listeners go to gibsongo.com forward slash Navarro and they donate anything at all, they're entered in for a chance to win a backstage pass to the Reawaken America Tour in Detroit, Michigan. So I'm going to pull this up here. It's gibsongo.com forward slash Navarro. And, Donna, right now we just had a $25 donation that just came in two minutes ago. A $25 donation just came in 22 minutes ago. A $50 donation from Kurt, 50 minutes or uh, 43 minutes minutes ago a five dollar donation just came in one hour ago and these donations are trickling in and it's the parallel economy donna it's people that are reaching into their wallets and saying what can i do and five dollars twenty five dollars at a time we're helping peter navarro but this dodd frank act is some serious stuff donna so i would tell everybody i was just talking to again i was just talking to peter navarro just talking to um these are these are serious people i was talking to andrew sorcini i was talking to uh, andrew uh, sorcini with beverly hills precious metals i was talking to andy schechtman this is a different precious metals guy i was talking to a banker all of them agree that bail-ins are more than likely going to happen where the bank can reach into your bank account take your money out to pay off the bank's failures as a result of the Dodd-Frank Act and the ending of the bank term funding program. So if you're out there today and you've thought about getting into precious metals, I would recommend you at least schedule a consultation, Parallel Economy, with Beverly Hills Precious Metals. It's bh-pm.com, bh-pm.com. And just for anybody out there that doesn't know this, if you advertise on, let's say, Salem Radio, and I'm not attacking Salem Radio, I'll just give you an example. For anybody out there that listens to Salem Radio, there's commercials that run. So you might hear an encouraging word or a message that was taught, and then the commercial will be for a big company. Those big companies do not want to support things like the Reawaken Tour or the Kim Clement Ministries. And so you have people like Mike Lindell, uh, MyPillow, uh, and, and what they'll do is if you use promo code uh, uh, Kim Clement, when you go to MyPillow.com and use promo code, I think, the, I think the promo code is Kim Clement, Mike will actually donate or assign a certain percentage of the revenue to your ministry as opposed to that going to buy airtime on radio. So when you go to bh-pm.com, in the little comment box, you say, uh, I heard about you through Kim Clement Ministries. When you go to bh-pm.com, you're supporting Kim Clement Ministries. And that's how it's happening because the traditional advertising model just doesn't exist. So update number one, bank term funding program ended March 11th. Thing number two, the Dodd-Frank Act, that actually will uh, authorizes bail-ins. And I want everyone to write that down, look it up. It's very important. Now, the third, this is Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. The Bible, um, and I'm sorry your mom couldn't be here with us to discuss this because she'll know this, but Revelation chapter 6, verse 6, the Bible discusses hyperinflation. And so what's going to happen now is as of January 1st, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, these countries that have been hoarding gold for the last 17 years, they now added Iran, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Egypt, Ethiopia, and Putin just announced this just in. He's planning on adding 25 additional countries to the gold-backed BRICS currency system. So what's going to happen is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, this is not my opinion, Putin is saying it, they're going to roll out their own currency that will be backed by gold, and that will not make our money worth less, it will make our money worthless. So if you're out there today, and you have the financial capacity to, pay, uh, to buy a $25 piece of silver, $25, I would recommend that you would schedule a consultation with somebody and at least schedule a consultation and look into it. And then I would ask you, I'd look it up tonight, look it up, go to DuckDuckGo and, and, and just type it in. 
gold-backed currency. Hit enter and ask yourself why are the countries that hate why why do the countries that hate us, Donna? Why are they all hoarding the Earth's gold in preparation to the to introduce their currency? Why are they hoarding the Earth's gold? Why is the American population unaware of this idea? So I would encourage everybody. News news update number three here. I would recommend that you get educated that Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa are planning on introducing a gold-backed programmable central bank digital currency. And this is something my dad did prophesy about. He uh, very specifically, uh, we've talked about this before, but he saw Putin and four others writing things down. And there were numerous times that he spoke of the, when he prophesied of the, of the giants um, that we would face. And he compared Trump to David, to King David, who killed the giant mm. with a stone. And all of those things have become very, very significant as we've gone through this journey. Sadly, right. without my dad, but the authenticity of what he prophesied is pure because he, he wasn't even alive for any of the things that have gone on to form an opinion or pick a side. And so when we look right. at those prophecies and then listen to what you're saying right now, it really it brings the reality it kind of sort of crashing down sometimes a little bit like, oh, my goodness, like this isn't conspiracy. Wow. And I right. think that struggle for us all has been, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Um, right. Whereas and that's used as a tactic against us to, to cover the truth. And then you look at things my dad prophesied and it pierces right through all of that. Because God knew in advance, obviously, what was going to happen and prepared us. And so um, we are in the situation now where we see um, when we are weakest because we have Joe Biden in the office, that all of these right. countries, our adversaries and enemies, are taking advantage of this. And so, right. um, but God did know in advance that this would happen. He warned us and prepared us. And so it is up to us to be vigilant um, in this journey, um, definitely. Well, I'll say this too, piling on, um, you know, move number four, you, you talk about the conspiracy. Well, what does the word conspiracy mean? I'm not arguing with you at all. I just want to be clear. Um, the word conspiracy, um, I, one of the things I love about Donna Clement, one thing I love about you and your mom is that you guys actually think you're critical thinkers, and you read the Bible. Usually what I find is the people that are really, really, really strong critical thinkers, um, a lot of times they, they, in their own wisdom, they're reluctant to trust in the infinite wisdom of God, a.k.a. the Bible. And a lot of times I find people that really trust the Bible are sometimes afraid to think critically because they think that they might find that the Bible's not real, but the Bible is real, right? So we need to have a critical thinking mindset and read the Bible. It, it, they're not two competing ideas. But the word conspiracy is a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. That's what a conspiracy means. So let's talk about Jesus for a second. This is the next update for you. Matthew chapter 21, verse 12 through 13. Jesus said, Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made a den of thieves. I don't know if people know this idea, but the phrase used here, Matthew chapter 21, chapter 12, uh, chapter, chapter 21, verse 12 is money changers. Do you know, folks, that most people in the banking system refer to as the Federal Reserve as money changers? Do you know that? So the Federal Reserve is not federal. There is no reserve, and they're largely referred to as the money changers. And guess who Jesus had a problem with? The money changers. And guess who we now have a problem with? The money changers. So the Federal Reserve is not federal. There is no reserve. And what they're wanting to do, who's they? The Federal Reserve, the, the Bank of International Settlements. So update number four, again, we still have a problem with the money changers. All right? So update number five, I want everyone to know about this. We'll go fast. Everyone needs to know about the Bank of International Settlements, the Bank of International Settlements. And uh, again, if you just type it into Google, you'll find them. Augustin Carstens is the head of the Bank of International Settlements. It's like the central bank of central banks. And this guy, I'm going to pull up a clip of him here. He, for whatever reason, he's doing interviews now, Donna. He's hopping on independent media from time to time, and he's getting on stage, and he's getting on the mic, and he's telling people about the introduction of programmable 
central bank digital currency. Listen to this, folks. We tend to establish the equivalence with cash, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who is using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also, we will have the technology to enforce that. Okay, he just said he can control who buys or sells. That's what he just said. And that's yeah. Augustin Karstens. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, update number five: the Bank of Inter the, This is the Bank of International Settlements, the BIS. They're planning to introduce a programmable central bank digital currency. Update number six: everybody needs to know this. Everyone needs to Google. I'm telling you things you can look up today, folks. Okay. There's a bank called the New Development bank okay it, it it now exists look it up folks the new development bank now exists and this bank is in shanghai china and don a they plan on using the bank of internet the, the, uh, the new development bank as the home office for the world's new global reserve currency so china folks i'm talking about china you know forced organ harvesting uh locking you in your home to keep you from dying from the virus Forced quarantine camps, uh, re-education camps, you know, bang the gong, China, they're going to be in control of the new monetary system. So I just want people to know. Now, that someone says, well, this terrifying. is terrifying. Yeah, it, it is terrifying, and it's also in the Bible, which was written not to scare, but to prepare. So we go to update number seven, okay? Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 to 14. Now, right about here, this is what happens when I'm on wonderful shows like yours. People in the comments will go. I hear he got kicked out of Oral Roberts University. That's what I heard. It's true. It's true. I did. I was 18 years old, 19 years old. I, um, I thought I would make a funny little parody song, and the school didn't find it to be as funny, and I got kicked out. My wife graduated. Um, and what will happen is, Donnie, people in the comment section, not your listeners, but other people will say, this guy, what denomination is this guy? Donnie, I watched them do it to your father as well, and I'm not certainly in the same category as your father, but, you yeah, know, it's like people didn't know what to do with the long hair, the accent, the music, the percussion, yeah. the keys. What is happening? Um, and I think with, with the way God has kind of called me and, and grabbed me by my cranium and, and forced me into this, um, you know, I was a whatever you want to call it, successful business guy. And people can go to thrivetimeshow.com and you can see at thrivetimeshow.com just thousands of client success stories at thrivetimeshow.com. And God arrested my attention and asked me to speak out on these things without a denomination, really, to call my own. I go to Pastor Jackson Lawmeyer's church, Sheridan Dot Church. I read the Bible consistently. I love Kim Clement Ministries. Um, but I'm sharing um, the facts. In the Bible, Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 through 14, everyone look it up. The Bible states that when the Euphrates River dries up, the false prophet will show up. And China and Russia will team up. Folks, listen to this. The Euphrates River is drying up. The false prophet did show up. You've all know Harari. And China and Russia are teaming up militarily and financially. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to read it to you word by word, a word for word. This is Revelation chapter 16, verse 12 through 14. It says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, that the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay, kings of the east, it's China. Euphrates River drying up, that's true. Kings of the East, China and Russia. So the Euphrates River did dry up, right? The false, the, the false prophet did show up. That's Yuval Noah Harari. China and Russia did team up. Let's continue. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, um, Yuval Noah Harari is saying out loud right now that the technology that he's creating will cause the end of humanity. Listen to this. This is the end of human history. Not the end of history, the end of human-dominated history. History will continue with somebody else in control. Okay, now history means his story, correct? So on Yuval Noah Harari's website, yinharari.com, he writes, this is his mission statement on his website right now, yinharari.com. It says, history began when humans invented gods and will end when humans become gods. Uh, Nephilim much? 
uh, false prophet much. He just yeah. passed Donna this week. Forty seven. Exactly. He just passed forty seven million copies of his books that are sold. He just he just sold his forty seven millionth book. This is Yuval Noah Harari. He's on late night media now. He's on the late night television, mainstream media. He's showing up now um, with late. I mean, we, the biggest personality, Stephen Colbert. I mean, he's on late night television. He's on MSNBC for one hour and eight minutes. He's praised by Obama, Zuckerberg, Gates, MIT, Stanford. You know, his newest book is endorsed by Bill Gates and all of the thought leaders. I mean, this is the keynote speaker at the World Economic Forum. He is telling the world that, that he created this technology. Like he's saying the technology that he created, he's saying that Stalin and Hitler would have been unstoppable with the technology that he's developed. And he meant, oh, yes, he did. You know, this guy's calling for rewriting the Bible using AI. He is. Listen to this, folks. What is going to happen to our species in the coming century or two? In all likelihood, our species is going to disappear. Okay. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Encouragement. In the medium future, <laughs> within a few decades or a couple of centuries at most, Homo sapiens will disappear. The next big revolution in history will, of course, transform the economy and <laughs> politics and yeah. society and all that. But it will also transform our bodies and our minds. And it will replace Homo sapiens with a very different kind of being. Nephilim. Nephilim. Think about the politician you most hate in the world, or think about the religious movement or the ideological movement, that, uh, uh, which was the worst in history from your perspective, and take a few minutes to think, what would they do? Yeah with the technologies that I'm developing right now. He's saying that he's developing the technology. So again, update number seven, okay? We're, if, you, if you read the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 12 through 14, I'm going to verse 13 now. Revelation chapter 16, verse 13, it says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's China. Out of the mouth of the beast. Folks, you got to look it up, okay? The computer used to power CERN right now, it's a Google quantum computer. Google's logo is 666. CERN, CERN's logo is 666. And the nerds who are in the technology space, they all refer to the Google quantum computer as the beast. So out of the beast, okay? Oh, and the goodness. false prophet is Yuval Noah Harari. Now, just so we're clear in the Bible, if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, Juan, et cetera, you had John the Baptist, and John the Baptist was like a, a prophetic voice, right, telling people that Jesus was coming. He's, tell, he's getting the people ready for the emergence of Jesus. He's trying to say that the next guy who comes after me, I won't even be worthy of this guy. You know, so John the Baptist, he baptizes Jesus. I think we all know that story. Hopefully we, hopefully we, we, we remember that story. This guy, you've all know, Harari, is paving the way for the Antichrist. You have the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Team Jesus. Then you have Team Satan. You've got the Antichrist, you've got the false prophet, okay, and you have Satan. This homeboy, Yuval Noah Harari, his name in Hebrew, Yuval means father of music. Noah means, as in the days of Noah, Harari means mountain dweller. If his name was a sentence, it would mean the father of music, as in the days of Noah, shall ascend to the mountaintop. Now, the project he's working on, update number eight, we're going fast. Is called the Gilgamesh Project. So, folks, the Gilgamesh, the Gilgamesh Project slash the Nimrod Project. What am I saying? The Nimrod Project, the Gilgamesh Project is back. It's here. So, what am I saying? You've all know a Harari. He was discovered by Barack Obama when he was working on the Gilgamesh Project. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Nimrod tried to build the Tower of Babel. God confounded the languages, right? And so Nimrod escaped. He ran away, and he was buried under the underneath the Euphrates River, but not before he changed his name to Gilgamesh. Okay, so when you hear Nimrod, you need to hear Gilgamesh. So guess what happened when the Euphrates River dried up? Done, eh? They found the artifacts related to the 
Gilgamesh. Yes, to Gilgamesh. So that is what's happening. These people are trying to recreate the Tower of Babel, as your father talked about with ISIS in this spirit. These these satanic idiots are trying to, I say idiots, someone who knows what to do, but they go the opposite way. That's what an idiot is. They know what works, but they do the opposite of it. They go again. They, these people, these people know God. You've all know Harari knows the Bible. He is actually a historian and theological teacher in a college at the Hebrew University. This homeboy writes in Hebrew. He reads in Hebrew, and he rejects the God of his fathers. He's openly gay. He wants to ban the eating of meat. He wants to rewrite the Bible using AI. He says humans are hackable animals. He wants to end the traditional marriages that we know today. He actually wants to ban the eating of meat. He now is calling for changing the times and the laws. He, he, he did an interview to Donna here in the past 60 days where he says we need to change all of the laws. So again, number nine or number eight, the, the Gilgamesh project is here. And number nine, I'll take a deep breath here. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 is upon us. Matthew 24, verse 37. And someone says, I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay. If you remember Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, I'll pull it up because I don't have the whole Bible memorized. I'm pulling it up, and the Bible states here that it's going to be like as in the days of Noah before the return of Christ. So what were the days of Noah like? Uh, fallen angels were mating with humans. Uh, okay. Uh, fallen angels were mating with humans, and the earth was filled with perpetual violence and wickedness. And guess what the, the, the word for perpetual violence and wickedness is in Hebrew? It's Hamas. And are you not seeing, I mean, Donnie, are you seeing the violence everywhere in Haiti? Are we seeing the violence in Haiti, in London, and, and France, everywhere? Everywhere. I mean, the this Haitian is, cannibal story, I, I, I saw the video. They took it down off of X, but I did see a video of them doing this, and you realize how demonic this is. And you can really see the devil's hand in it because... What you're hearing coming out of the mouths of these people is, oh, humanity's going to end. And then you have this corruption in what they're doing to children with the transgender th nonsense. And um, uh, the mutilation of God's creation is what we're seeing to the point where now in Haiti, where you see the Clintons had heavy involvement over there, and the uh, the prime minister re was uh, um, assassinated a couple of years ago. I remember when that happened. So to see what's happened in Haiti that they are literally eating one another uh, should be very eye-opening to every especially Again, if you have just, any kind of a, just even a tiny belief in god yeah, no, this is, again, I'm, I'm just, I'm going, I'm going to try to get through all of them today. Number 10, you know, the Mark of the Beast technology now exists. So if you just do a search for MIT quantum dot, MIT quantum dot, and I don't want to, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear, I know someone, someone's wanting to say it. Someone's going to say, they've been saying this since the 80s, since the 60s, since the 40s. My mother was saying this in the 20s. I get, I get, hang in there, hang in there. This is the MIT quantum dot. This is a technology that stores your medical and financial records under your skin. I want everyone to look it up. Type in MIT quantum dot. It stores your medical records and financial records under the skin. It's the MIT quantum dot. Look it up, folks. Number ten, number 11, okay? Look up the MIT CBDCs. And I know I frustrate some people that I'm looking at my notes, but I don't have everything memorized, so I always cite my sources. So look up MIT CBDCs. Look it up, folks. So MIT developed the CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies, money you can program. MIT also developed the quantum dot. It's a it's where it stores your medical and financial records under your skin. And everyone look up quant.network, quant.network. This will explain to you how the programmable central bank digital currency works. Now, Donna, inside, uh, I don't want to get you banned off of YouTube. So inside the technology that everybody put in their body recently, okay, we'll just say that. So inside the technology that everybody put in their body recently, there's a technology in there called graphene, okay, graphene. And graphene is the basis for what? Quantum technology, quantum communication. So, Don, hey, think about this for a second. Quant.network is the name of the technology that, that makes it possible to uh, turn on or off your money based upon your physical location, where you go, what you say. It's surveillance under the skin. The MIT developed the quantum dot, which stores your medical records under your skin. And the name of the computer that powers it all, a.k.a. the beast, is called the Google Quantum Computer. And guess what the basis of quantum technology is? 
graphene. And guess what was in those experimental things that Tucker Carlson, for some reason, Tucker Carlson can talk about it right now, but on your program, if I do, you get kicked off. I don't quite understand how that works. But um, Tucker did an interview last night uh, with uh, Dr. Pierre Corey. And Pierre Corey said that term life insurance companies, you know, where you buy a life insurance, not for your whole life, but for a term of your life where you're likely to be healthy. The life insurance, the amount of people that have died and have filed, or their families filed a life insurance claim has gone up 40% year over year since people started putting that crazy quantum technology under their skin, that graphene. So that's what's going on. So that technology now exists. So final and point number 13 before I take a deep breath here. This is big. This is big. The Bible's real. What? What? Number 13. Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan is not my validator, uh, but I'm just saying, Joe Rogan and the world knows the Bible's real. What? Joe Rogan and the world knows the Bible is real. How do I know this? Because the other day, I was doing an interview with Alex Jones, and Alex Jones told me, Joe Rogan is reading the Bible. I thought, that's interesting. I was in the studio with Alex Jones. Then, during the last 90 days, I will share with you facts that are true but related to Joe Rogan. On his show, he's doing an interview with Jim Brewer. And he's uh, Jim Brewer, who's on the Reawaken Tour, the comedian. And he just randomly starts talking about the Tower of Babel. And he starts talking about the book of Ezekiel when he's interviewing Jim Brewer. Then Joe Rogan, 90 days ago, he's doing an interview with a man. And he stops the interview and reads the book of Revelation on the show. On the show, Joe Rogan is reading the book of Revelation. Joe Rogan was taught, Jim Brewer and Joe Rogan were talking about AI technology and how it could be used to translate. And Joe Rogan goes, yeah, that's in the Tower of Babel. That's going to allow everyone to speak the same language. I mean, Joe Rogan is talking about the mark of the beast. He's talking about Ezekiel. It's almost like a early, it's almost like a Kim Clement. Um, you remember when your father began um, talking more openly about the book of Revelation? Because there was a time where he wasn't super comfortable going there. And there was a time in the ministry, and again, I only watched it from afar, Donne, but your dad started talking about the book of Revelation. And I think a lot of people were going, what, what, what now? And your father started speaking about Ukraine and gold and Trump would become a trumpet and he would be a president for two terms and that he would rebuild the wall. And, and at least I'm sure the people in the room were thinking, has he lost his mind? I mean, because he previously, from what I know, your father was a very accurate prophet, but this was like a new thing he started doing. And people were going, what is going on? I thought Kim Clement was the praise and worship guy who had prof- prophecies related to people. Now, all of a sudden, he's talking geopolitical. That's what Rogan is doing to his audience. I mean, every show now, he's talking about Revelation or Daniel. So I believe that Joe Rogan and many people are discovering that the Bible is real, Donna. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. I am, too. You know, I actually got a bit emotional when I because I heard about Joe Rogan. Uh, what had happened with him. And I, I, I listened to what he was saying. And he actually, just the other day, someone he was interviewing was talking about the integration of AI into the human body. And he actually mm. said to him, well, what if you get stuck? What if your soul gets stuck in your body and you can't go to heaven? Now to hear Joe Rogan say something like that, I actually got emotional because he used to be very anti-Christian. Right. Um, you know, uh, uh, not in a, an aggressive way or anything, but he was just, I don't right. believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. So to hear him ask that very question, which is something I had asked because it in revelation, it says they will cry for death and it will not come to them. I forget where now off the top of my head, but it does say that. And I had had the same thought is if, um, for instance, you know, mom is always referring to in Daniel and many of you already know the iron and clay that will not, not mix which is at the feet of the statue that Daniel saw, that he described. And the, the iron and the clay, we're the clay, the iron being the AI, that question came to my mind is if you, if you integrate that into you know, the human body and the, the technology like that, you could possibly, that's something I had thought of. So it made me, it actually made me quite emotional because I felt like of all the people, I did not expect it to come from Joe Rogan. And, and it really shows you that God can make a change in a person's life uh, in a mo- in a most unexpected way sometimes. Uh, that's the way it happened with my dad, actually. There's the way he even got saved and all his testimony. It was one of those kind of stories. So I'm very encouraged by hearing that about, about Joe Rogan, and I have been watching that as well. It's very good. 
You know, this is uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 43 that you were referencing, just so people can know that verse there. It says, And whereas thou okay. saw uh, iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So that, that's what's going on there. Now, Klaus Schwab the other day did sort of a satanic altar call. Um, and it was the craziest thing I've heard in a long time. And I've heard some crazy stuff. Don, I mean, I've heard some crazy stuff. I feel like we're watching a movie. You know, I feel like we're watching a movie that I don't want to watch. Uh-huh. And I feel like every day is like a weird Marvel movie that I didn't want to go see. I thought I was just going to go hang out with my wife and kids. And next thing you know, I'm watching a – I got five kids. I got an incredible wife. I would like to talk to her about, you know, I don't know, how was your day? Would you like to get some lasagna for dinner? You know, these sorts of topics. My son's drum lessons, how's drums going? My daughter's, you know, uh, gymnastics, how are we doing here? My daughter's horseback riding lessons, how's that going? But instead, we're talking about transhumanism. It's crazy. But listen to Klaus Schwab speaking to a group of young people at what he calls the Young Global Leaders Meeting. Listen to this. You have the chance to look forward to a career of 50 years. And my own opinion... Yeah, maybe, maybe more. You will get some injections and some uh, and so on. And um, um, and then don't forget your your avatar will continue to live. So uh, uh, and your your brain will be replicated see, through artificial intelligence and algorithm. Um, so we don't know. He's talking about replicating your brain using using artificial intelligence and literally uploading your soul into a uh, a computer system aka an avatar he's talking about that i'm not talking about that and he wants to connect everyone's brain together always going back to the bible the bible says they will be all of one mind of one mind okay so the bible says they're all going to be of one mind and you say where does it say that i love it when people ask that question that's revelation chapter 17 verse 13 says, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. What's the beast? Again, leading technologists refer to the quantum computer used by CERN, the the Google quantum computer, as the beast. What? And who's the one who claims he invented this technology? Yuval Noah Harari. And who's Yuval Noah Harari? A guy who wants to be the false prophet. I mean, it's all coming together. So again, it's Revelation chapter 17, verse 13. And this is called an, a, a, a brain computer interface or a BCI, if you want to look it up there. So a BCI, brain computer interface. So who's pushing that? That would be Elon Musk's uh, Neuralink. He has FDA approval to, to put a chip in your head. That's also his lady friend, Grimes. She's created a non-invasive neural interface that she calls it's real it's called the crown the, the neurosity crown neurosity crown that's the brand neurosity crown a uh, crown and it claims you can connect your brain to chat gpt without having to put something in your brain where elon musk has the one that goes in your brain and that would be and the, the, the two people leading that would be elon musk and the woman he produced two kids with named grimes now moving on to number 16 this is crazy stuff here baphomet is everywhere what yeah, Baphomet. So Joe Rogan's doing an interview with Cat Williams. I don't recommend anybody listens to Cat Williams' comedy, but they're talking about why are all transgenders everywhere. And Cat Williams said, well, that's Baphomet. That's the ritual of Baphomet. And, and what? And so Aleister Crowley, who many people in Hollywood and music uh, get their inspiration for, Aleister Crowley, someone says, I don't know how to spell it. You're losing me here. Aleister Crowley. Someone says, I, I don't know how to spell his name. That's fair. It's Alistair. So A-L-E-I. A-L-E-I. Yep. Mm-hmm. There it is. And I'm just going to pull it up here so we can read this, read this to everybody. And he was known as sort of the, the founder of um, modern Satanism. Uh, he's quoted by the Beatles, quoted by the Doors. Most musicians really get excited about Alistair Crowley. He was an English occultist. Anyway, this guy had a ritual that he did. I'll be very vague so I don't get you kicked off your, your, your YouTube. But the Red Hot Chili Peppers wrote an album about it. But he calls this ritual sex magic, right? So they do horrible, unspeakable things. They mix satanic magic with the actual creation of life. And that's why many people believe that Grimes and Elon Musk got together because she is an occultist. Many describe her as a witch. And she actually wrote the album that prophesied COVID-19, before COVID-19. So Grimes prophesied 
COVID-19, before COVID-19. And she wrote a song called We Appreciate Power, which is about uploading your brain into a collective consciousness and your soul being trapped forever. She wrote another song called Shinigami Eyes, where she talks about being friends with demons. She wrote another song about how heavy I fell, and it's a celebration of Satan falling. I mean, I can go on and on, but this, her album she wrote, it's called Miss Anthropocene. So number 17, the Anthropocene is here. You say, what is that? It stands for Human Controlled Gene, Anthropocene. And it's on the uh, World Economic Forum's website. It's the title of Grimes' album, and it's why Bill Gates built a seed vault or a seed bunker or a bunker, a seed bunker that's supposed to survive the, the collapse, and it's, to, it's to, sur to survive the Anthropocene, the human-controlled gene. So these are all things that are all happening, and you say, well, what? So if you watch the Super Bowl, you ask, why did Usher perform on a stage that well, on top of the stage there was – or he was the stage he was standing on – featured apocalyptic imagery and an upside down cross. Well, he's putting it out there. Why did, were there peacocks that came out before Usher hopped on the stage? A peacock is synonymous with the Phoenix. So out of the ashes, the Phoenix will rise, right? So that's what, that's why the peacocks were there. That's why he wore a Phoenix brooch when he was performing. This is why Alicia Keys play, played a serpent head piano during their performance, Alicia Keys played a serpent head piano. That's why the movie Rollerball was reenacted. The movie Rollerball was reenacted um, during Usher's performance where they were all wearing skates because Rollerball is about the world's economies and governments collapsing. And so they foreshadowed that. That's why when Usher performed, his shadow was used to show we were down to the final hour. That's why they are so obsessed with this new eclipse coming to hit the United States. This is where it puts a big X over the United States. This is why Elon Musk changed the name of Twitter to be X to correspond with the X coming over the United States. This is why Elon Musk changed Twitter to be X. This is why uh, Madonna now performs with an X eye patch, the sign, the sign of Satan. That's why the Greek numeral for uh, the, the letter X in Greek is 600. So XXX is 666. That's why the pornography, which is the idea, the celebration of sin or the idea of you're, you're celebrating, um, let's say this um, uh, sexual lasciviousness or perversion. That's why, where the word pornea comes from. X. That's why Little Nas X was the first openly satanic rapper. Little Nas X. That's why Elon Musk is saying that oh. X become the app where you will buy and sell and make video and photo calls. That's why Elon Musk is developing a web to catch the prey. You think about a World Wide Web, and Cer CERN invented the World Wide Web, and they called it WWW because W is six. So WWW is 666. And what are they using the World Wide Web for? catching everybody, right? Anything you have said or will say on Twitter will be used against you because they are building a world wide web to round up the saints so they have proof that we are standing up for the word of God. That is what's happening. That's 25 things. I just snuck in a couple more there. So we got 27 things. But I think that most people listening to today's show, they go, I, I didn't know half of this. I didn't know a third of that. I didn't know 90% of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just right. land the plane here. We're going to land. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to land the plane here. So we're going to land in the plane. No crash landings. So one, if you can, if you have $5 in your pocket right now, take that $5, get it out, wave, wave, it, at, wave it at your TV or whatever, and go to GiveSendGo.com and donate something to support my 74-year-old friend, Peter Navarro. And then make sure you text me on my cell phone number. And just text my cell phone number. And we're getting bombarded, by the way. I, I just did a business conference, and I'm getting like 50 people a day that are donating to Peter Navarro. So my phone is utter chaos right now. But if you text my phone number, a proof that you donated, a screenshot, you're entered in for a chance to win a backstage pass for the Reawaken America Tour June 7th and 8th. That's June 7th and 8th. You can get those tickets at time to freeamerica.com. Again, go to gibsongo.com forward slash Navarro and donate. Second, if you have not supported uh, Kim Clement Ministries. Uh, you haven't asked me to say this. I would encourage you to sow a seed. I certainly am not saying you're going to get a financial reward. I'm not telling you this is a, a get-rich-quick scheme. I'm not saying if you donate $10 to Kim Clement Ministries, you're going to get 100 back. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying 
you are out there unapologetically sharing the truth, and nobody on a practical level will allow this kind of information to be shared on their program except for you, Lance Wallnow, and a handful of programs like Amanda Grace. So if you can donate today, go to House of Destiny, go to the House of Destiny website, or actually just go to KimClement.com, KimClement.com, donate, GibsonGo.com, forward slash Navarro, donate. And the third and final call to action, is assume that every single thing I said on today's show is crazy. Assume I'm making things up. Assume I'm out of my mind. Watch the show again. Get out your Bible. Look up everything I said on today's show. I've cited every single source. I forced myself to look away from the camera at least 80% of the time so I could quote this, cite this, point this out. Look it up. Assume I've lost my mind. And I built a website page just for Alex Jones so he could verify it too on his show. I was on the show with General Flynn and Alex Jones. So if you go to timetofreeamerica.com, there are 119 biblical citations of prophetic events that the Bible said that would happen that are happening. And that's at timetofreeamerica.com forward slash Alex. Time- wow. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, just incredible information in there and uh hopefully you can see how all of this is tying in together hopefully um your eyes are open enough to see what is actually going on in the world um how these big corporations like google and um little trolls like yuval noah harari and uh klaus schwab his his uh little or you know his his boss anyways um are all entwined in this in this real evil um, crime syndicate, basically, um, of the world. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and end with a prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day, God. And we just ask that uh, you bless this nation, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over America and the world, God. Um, Lord, we ask that you continue to bring uh, dark, put light into darkness, God, bring light into darkness and expose the truth of these things that are going on that are so evil, Lord. We pray that you continue to open people's eyes as to what is really going on in the world. Lord, I believe that this world is not any darker than it was 50 years ago. I don't think it's any more evil than it was 50 years ago, God. I just think that we're seeing it more because your light is shining into the darkness, exposing these evils. And so, Lord, I pray that you eradicate the evil from the earth, God. And um, I pray that you you bring as many people as you can into uh, believing in you, Lord Jesus, and becoming true believers. And Lord, help us walk every single day with love in our hearts and uh, your light shining out from us, God, just as true examples of what a real Christian is, God, not a hypocrite, um, just somebody that's humble, who honestly and earnestly loves you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode and uh, I got another a special episode coming up that I'll know you will enjoy as well. Um, it'll probably come out in the next day or so. Um, but anyways, I'll talk to you later.